Hello, SGD, Sacred Geometry Geometry Decoded, and I'll, I've got a longer one planned, but I uh, actually want to just look at something, the speed of light, and uh, follow up, so, okay, that's not important for now, um, and how it connects to the Great Pyramid, so we have, most people think of speed light, they'd probably think about um, Albert Einstein, but it's actually got well, well before that, he's famous for relativity, but the speed of light was before that. But the issue is uh, speed of light and the Great Pyramid. Now, personally, I think I do believe the numbers are in there, um, but that it's more likely that it's connected to other constants such as phi, pi, e, and well, some other constants. But regardless of whether they knew it, I think it's actually that they understood a, a basic principle. Well. well Phi and pi and and e amongst others and that, and from that it's grown so it's embedded in there and once you start with a set of these very important constants that it's actually going to then build into the speed of light that's my theory maybe they did because I'll do a follow-up history on the speed of light because it was worked out using some very primitive means so it's the if they had the knowledge they certainly certainly had the ability to do it because it was done with very primitive means. So firstly, uh, there's a few claims going around, and so it was Charles Webb Jr., I believe was his name, who was the first to point out that the very centre of the Grand Gallery is 29.972954458 degrees north of the equator. That it's in the very centre is important because there's a whole, some really nice geometry in regards to the height, to the length, at, and pointing to the centre, because you get basically the square root of 3 plus 1, which is a nice connection to the vesica, but that's for another one. But the speed of light in metres per second as defined currently is on that number. Now that could be sheer coincidence. Um, okay, so pi is one of these universal important constants, and it just so happens that the grand gallery times the height, uh, grand gallery times pi is the height of the Great Pyramid. And there's all so much stuff going on there, but uh, one of the other, um, when they speak about this, you'll find this a lot. So, for instance, if you have a Great Pyramid, you draw a circle around it, and then you draw a circle on the inside of that square. Um, interesting to note that the ratio of air, if the area of this yellow circle is 1, then the area of this square is 27.3% larger, which connects back to the Grand Gallery uh, height of the Great Pyramid. 27.33 Doric Fathom, but my point is you have the square, you draw a circle on the inside and then you draw a circle on the outside and they say that if you uh, subtract the yellow circle circumference from the blue circle you should get 299.792458 metres, so that's now fractions of a millimetre, that 458 um, and the speed of light 299,792,458 metres per second. So, what I'd, well, you get the official repeated survey data, and you find that, well, the firstly, the period's not exactly a square. It's, it's a slight variation. So, there are four possible squares to work these circles off, because each of the base is slightly different. So, there I have got, and that's the results where we have here. So, it's between 299 0.627 and the variance is there, the average 299.7708. Now that's a difference of 2 millimetres, so that's quite a large circle, then to subtract it from this, again quite a large circle, and to be 2 millimetres out as an average, that's pretty, that's very, you know, in any other uh, sphere that would be, that margin of error would be well, well within the acceptable margins because of how it goes back to the original survey of the pyramid, how accurate was it, and to get within these fractions of a mill well. Um, so that's your, they're the numbers that you get. This is the desired number. You can see it's very close. Now, because of the runoff of the decimal points, you go, oh, that's noticeably different. But you have to remember after the third decimal point, that's fractions of a millimetre. And there's the differences there. So it is, this is all in metres. And so that's um, is it, uh, one and a half centimetres 
off again. That's that circle is over. The blue circle is over over a kilometre, one kilometre and twenty two metres. The yellow circle circumference seven hundred and twenty three metres. To get within that, that's you're doing pretty well, and that's the uh, averages. That's the percentage of accuracy there. So on that one, it's ninety nine point nine nine four eight percent. And if you get that, well, pre earlier attempts to capture the speed light they didn't get that high and they're recognized as as valid so but that could all be coincidence because this is relying on the meter and that's relying the other one is relying on well firstly understanding the position of the earth but also the number of degrees however there's lots of evidence for that but uh, so that's actually goes back to the late 1600s and Roma uh, he calculated the speed of light and these are the later um, variations of it so these ones even in the 20s and this is accepted this is uh, and their margin of error is um, the same or or greater than the one that would be seen on the pyramids there uh, and even this is like Foucault and how he calculated it so earlier they did it by observing the eclipse of Io around Jupiter and then just using a pendulum a clock and are able to get a very close uh, approximate and then we've you know this is apart from our lens and the, and the spinning turbine but you could do that with also uh, more simpler means but tabletop experiment now it, and then later it become to be more complicated but you they were able to do this and they did it before electronics and they did it quite well with some relatively is pretty some brass and some lenses and mirrors that's that's how they were able to do it so the speed of light the circumference of the blue minus yellow also you have that 29.9729 the center of the grand gallery this would rely on the meter in the 360 degree protractor now Here's some other, now that's known, now I want to present something else. And so this is the J.H. Cole survey, which also includes Petri survey and, and the Egyptian government survey. So the um, survey and, and, all, and the most recent ones have got the same measurement. So this is, is still considered as good as it gets. And what we will, we've also got the, the angles of the pyramid and the base length and all that stuff. But... Uh, so we're going to highlight those two portions and firstly the speed of light in meters per second and the speed of light and I'll put it in miles per second. So firstly the angle of a pyramid again because each side slightly varies so you have a slight variation of, of an angle 51 degrees 51 minutes and 4 seconds. Now we do decimal especially on GPS you'll see like 51.84 but uh, each degree is broken up, up into 60 minutes and each 60 minutes is broken up into 60 seconds so what you have is these are the that's how many seconds of the compass so the 360 degree comp 360 degree protractor is also 1,296,000 seconds so it's just a different way of thinking about it but those those are those same angles the ones we see here that's how they are that's what they are in seconds and it comes really, really close to the, again, the, uh, above 99%. I don't have the exact percentage of hand, okay, but very, very close to, to their, that's angles once again. And this 360 degree stuff. Now, what else? So, 186.664. Now, it's also interesting to consider, uh, Okay, so well, that's the number there, but 4, 3, 2 squared. It's very, very close to 432 squared, which is a nice connection. But uh, now we have the, anyway, for instance, now we have the slope angles. Again, each slope angle, so that's 612.067, 611.5, 611769. Each slope has a slight variance in it. But back to the meter, well, that the slope length of the pyramid, 186.383. Now, that's the closest there, but we also have the, the, the west and north and the east. And again, uh, I'm just highlighting this again, I must stress, I'm not 
pushing it. I, uh, I actually got some more information to come, and that that's going to really push it. But for you know, I, I think that the D's is there, but it it emerges from con from other info, and it's just how all these constants work together, and that things such as the meter, the cubit, and the foot are not just as arbitrary without deeper information as what we think. It's actually they they're bulging with information, but so we also have the speed of light meters per second at the center of a grand gallery. The, the meter, the 360 degree protractor, or just call it the compass, 360 degrees. Meter, speed of light miles per hour. And we also, as we saw earlier, that uh, drawing the circles on the outside and the inside of that square, again, how close we get to it. Now, the speed of light is now def the meter is now defined by the speed of light but what's interesting is that formerly the meter was originally a pendulum and it was a way to get exactly one second meters per second miles per second the second the meter and the speed of light are intricately linked intricately linked at the moment and it just so happens there's this nice connection back to the egyptian royal cubit which is this system of measure okay so like now the exact value of the meter is defined by the length of the speed of by the tra how far light travels in a vacuum during an interval of 1 over 2997924 so the meter is defined by the speed of light per second and now one second is defined by an atomic clock uh, since the 30s and 40s it was a quartz crystal but going back it was a pendulum clock and the one meter one second, one cubit thing goes on. Now, the pendulum varies north or south of the equator, and it just so happens that the angle of the pyramid is exactly where one meter is exactly 86,400 seconds per day. Now, there are other things worth considering. So, we have the um, yeah, history of the speed of light and the different... So, basically, it's this rotating mirror was the method of it. But now, we go to the Egyptian royal cubit, all the pyramids... They're defined by this unit, which is pi over 6 metres, which is a lovely link back to the metre itself, so a hexagon there. There's also some nice stuff that links to, because of okay, the speed of light in miles per hour, and so now we get like 5,280 feet per mile, so we have the imperial system, and well, E minus 1 or 1.78 E minus 1, is the ratio above 99.9% .9%. so e minus one feet equals one cubit and then we have this pi over six um, meters equals one cubit and uh, recent video okay e now that's something else but yeah so that's just an example of well, Hermes Hermeticism wisdom of both and uh, yep uh, so yeah, the, there's a lot more to cover on this because I got some, especially through the pendulum and these ancient units of measure, and what gets the pyramid in relation to the size of the Earth. It's I, I, I'm gonna eventually I'll do that, but there's some crazy stuff uh, in regards to that. Call it coincidence. I still I still believe that it emerges from understanding e pi phi. Um, uh, Bernoulli and some of these other math constants and that it emerges from that that these things are actually there is like almost a single source let's say but uh, especially if you choose the right unit of measure that this will all emerge from there and these are all again within margins of error and best available uh, survey data because there are small other little variations to consider in all of this but just for worth sharing great pyramid and the speed of light there's a few so the angle in connection to seconds of the compass, the second speed of light, meters. Anyway, have a good one.